Australian authorities have set a Sunday morning court hearing to decide whether tennis star Novak Djokovic will be removed from the country. Australia's government cancelled his visa over COVID-19 entry rules for a second time. The 20-time Grand Slam champion is now back in detention after another interview with immigration officials. In the match between Novak Djokovic and the Australian government, the world number one just lost the latest set. Now back in immigration detention, the tennis star will face another court hearing on Sunday after his visa was revoked for a second time. Immigration Minister Alex Hawke said the player's presence could stoke anti-vax sentiment and provoke civil unrest. A small crowd of supporters gathered outside the arena where the Australian Open is set to start on Monday. But as the Djokovic saga continues to dominate, there's little talk of tennis. Well, I, I tell you one thing. It's it's very clear that Novak Djokovic is a, is a, is one of the best players of the history, uh, without a doubt. Uh, but there is no one player in history that's it, that's that's more important than than an event. I think that all this could have been avoided, um, like we <clears throat> like we've all done by getting vaccinated and doing all the things we had to do to come here in Australia because. Everybody knew very clearly the, the rules and and it was, you just have to follow them and that's it. There's no, I don't think it's that difficult. On the streets too, sympathy is in short supply. Well, I would love for him to not be allowed to play, for him to go home, but um, the cynical part in me thinks that he will be allowed to play. I do feel that to make a statement to the rest of the world that we are sticking by what we've been calling for the last two years, I feel as best as if Djokovic should probably set out this one. As the other players gear up for one of the sport's biggest competitions, Sunday's ruling could end Djokovic's winning streak at the Australian Open for years to come. Well, journalist Tanya Lee joins us now from Melbourne. Now, Tanya, there's a lot of back and forth uh, around this case. Just bring us up to speed on the latest developments. Well, tonight in Melbourne, Novak Djokovic holds on to the hope of winning his 21st Grand Slam and ninth Australian Open title. He awaits the court decision to determine if he should be deported from an immigration facility that's very familiar to him. It's the same detention hotel where the unvaccinated Serbian player was detained and spent the first four nights since shortly after touchdown in Melbourne last week uh, before a judge freed him on Monday. Uh, Djokovic arrived in Melbourne's Park Hotel at around 3.30 p.m. local time. Uh, he appeared calm in a green tracksuit and a white face mask as he was driven into the facility's car park. And the media were camped outside the hotel gate, so, were, um, so too were police and a small group of refugee advocates who were calling on, calling for the release of the 33 asylum seekers who have been, who have not left the facility in, in many months since their transfer there, and some who have been in detention for many years. What are we to expect from this uh, court hearing on Sunday? I can't predict what the courts are likely to do tomorrow, but legal experts tell me that Djokovic has a very good chance of staying, uh, particularly now that his case will be heard before a full court. Uh, that's three justices instead of one. And that leaves very little room for the government to appeal if the court rules in Djokovic's favour. And if Djokovic isn't allowed to play, how is this likely to disrupt uh, the proceedings when it comes to the Australian Open? Well, I think it'd be mayhem, um, first of all, for the organisers. They would have to reshuffle the draw. Um, if Djokovic is supported, uh, he would either be replaced in the draw by a lucky loser or, as I said, the seeds would be reshuffled, meaning his slot in the draw would go to number five seed, um, Andre Rublev of Russia. And then the favourites will then become number two seed, Daniil Medvedev, number three, Alex Zarev, and number six, Rafael Nadal, um, who told the media earlier that he was a little bit tired of the controversy around his rival. 
Mm. What's been the reaction to all of this in Australia? Well, Melbournians have endured six lockdowns and the longest number of days in the world under lockdown restrictions, making us a very, very tired bunch. Uh, Australia is also one of the highest vaccinated places in the world. And I believe many people here want Djokovic to understand that rules are rules and obey them or go home. Uh, of course, there are a growing number of people who want Australia's borders to remain free and open and, and want to see Djokovic play. But equally, I expect that if he does get on the court, he'll be met with plenty of boos. All right. Tanya Lee in Melbourne for us. Thank you very much. Thanks.